Yo. What up? All right. Um. So, uh, we got part three of our Shafir's Jew. Okay. Okay. Yeah, man. I'm really liking this special, man. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, this might be one of the most informative specials I've ever watched. I'm learning a lot. Yeah, about religion, you know, and and uh, the specific types of Jews. Yeah. You know? And uh, other religions, too. The, you know, other interesting facts that I did not know. You know what I mean? About religion. Yeah. yeah. I have a new appreciation for Jewish people. Yeah. And chauffeur. You know what I'm saying? But all right, man. Well, let's go. Let's go. You ready? Yes. So, we have these kosher laws, and, uh, and so here's my favorite what if from the Talmud. What if you're making some soup, okay? Let's imagine a big vat of soup in, in the town square in Jesus' time, Jerusalem. You know, can you picture it? Some guy's making this fucking cauldron of soup, and one of these goys, one of these shifty fucking goys, <laughs> he's just kind of like milling about, you know, just hanging by nearby. What's that goy even doing here? Nobody wants him here. <laughs> Just shifty, you know? Just bringing down property values. <laughs> I hate when they're here. And he reaches into his pocket. This can't be good. What's this going? And he pulls out, yep, some ham. <laughs> no one's looking. Dunks the ham right in the soup. He's like, fuck off, Jews. What if that happens? Can you eat the soup or not? That's what the Talmud asks. That's a legit what if from the Gemara. <laughs> that I stayed for three weeks in a yeshiva in Jerusalem when I was 19 years old. I get the other ones. I really do. What, what if you kill somebody by accident? What if you know, stab a period into your wife? Uh... <laughs> sure, sure, sure. What if a rogue goy loses goddamn marbles. <laughs> Breaks through your Jew security. <laughs> and commits just the softest act of terrorism of all time. <laughs> it's a hate crime, pure and simple, it's a hate crime. But no loss of life. But ooh, what a possible loss of soup. <laughs> well, what a dab, it's not gonna happen, totally. So if that happens, the Gemara asks, then uh, what do you do? What do you do with the soup? Can you eat it or can you not eat it? What do you, not the Orthodox Jews, everybody else. What do you guys think? No. Eat it, a couple hell no's. What? Take out the ham. All right, you're thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Smart. Thinking. That's what the Gemara does, by the way. It just teaches you, like, think it out, logic this out. What can you do? You know, <laughs> maybe run it through a sheet, maybe whatever. Like, <laughs> You know, but all they do, <laughs> ancient rabbis just discussed it and uh, come up with an answer. And you're all wrong. You're all wrong. You were never going to get it. Uh, the answer is, for sure you were never going to get this. The answer is, it depends on the ratio of ham to soup. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, and that number, and I don't know why, that number, actually, if anybody knows it, on the count of three, say it. One, two, three. Sixtieth. Yeah, one sixtieth. I'm not making it up. <laughs> one sixtieth? Yeah. A lot of you Christians are like, wait, what's going on right now? <laughs> Did Ari have 47 audience plants? <laughs> one sixtieth. The law is called Bito Bashishim, the waste of the sixtieth. And uh, if it's less than one sixtieth, you know, if it's, if it's one sixty-fourth ham to soup, then the ancient rabbi's like, hey man, let's just soup a little bit of ham in it. That never hurt nobody. <laughs> Yum, yum, eat it up. Damn. But if it's a little less water or a little more ham, it's 159th ham to soup. Then they're like, dude, that's obviously ham soup. <laughs> <laughs> Pour it out on the street. Don't give it to the nachos. That'll incentivize them to do it again. Uh, Throw it out. Uh, Here's the cool thing, though. Here's what me and all my friends, like, tapped into. When we were 19 in, in the Sishua. We were like, uh, here's the coolest part of the law. The ham in the, in the non-ham soup, you know, if it's 167th, whatever, ham to soup, it's no longer considered ham. Yeah, it's lost its hamness. <laughs> so you can eat that ham. Oh, okay. that, hmm. my friends, is the loophole that we were all looking for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jews do love loopholes. 
That's what makes us such great tax attorneys. <laughs> we find loopholes and we exploit them. We really do. Uh, like, the, you know how the women wear the wigs? Loophole. You ever see the women wear the wigs? The oh, that's women. It's because this, because, okay, you can't covet your neighbor's wife. And, and uh, they say one of the things you covet is their hair. Hair is an attractive quality in a woman. So you have to cover your hair if you're a married woman. So these Jewish Damn. women, who are just as smart as Jewish men, they went looking for loopholes. <laughs> so they went to their rabbis. They're like, Rabbi, can we cover up our hair with a baseball cap? And he's like, yeah, whatever, do anything. And they're like, can we cover up our hair with someone else's hair? <laughs> <laughs> and the rabbi's like, where are you going with this? <laughs> no, like, well, we propose we cover up our hair with some hair we bought in China. So it's not us they're attracted to. It's Sung Lee from Shanghai. <laughs> and the rabbis were like, well played. <laughs> um, you can't use electricity on the Sabbath. That's one you're not allowed to do. If the light's on, it's on. If it's off, it's off. From Friday night sundown to Saturday sundown. All Shabbos long. You can't use electricity. However, yeah. you can get a goy to use it for you. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you can't ask outright, because that's cheating but you can hint strongly at it. <laughs> so maybe you have an Orthodox Jewish family in your, in your building or your neighborhood, and maybe they talk to you for the first time ever. <laughs> and you're like, this is odd. You're like, hey, neighbor, uh, how you doing? I've lived next door for the last 25 years. I haven't said hi to you ever. <laughs> well, it turns out it's very hot out, and we left our air conditioning off. And you'd be like, okay, you should turn it on. Like, oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, <laughs> I cannot turn it on because my God forbids it. However, if the goy were to do it for me, uh. by then, I could be a nice, cool breeziness. <laughs> that happens on the Shabbos. What you should do is, you should go over there and turn it on for them. Be nice about it. And then you'll be known as a Shabbos goy. <laughs> and that is the highest level of goy. <laughs> There's so many rules. <laughs> yeah, in fact, actually, if you have next door neighbors who are Arthur's Jews, just go over there and be like, how's your light situation today? <laughs> Friday night to Saturday, like, can I help with anything? Anything bothering you? Hint, hint. They'll love you, dude. They'll give you tons of challah. <laughs> so anyway, back to Beetle Bashishim. Back to the waste of the 60th. Me and all my friends are like, that's a loophole we've been looking for. What if one of these goys comes to my mom's kitchen? You know, maybe the Amazon delivery guy. <laughs> And he's like, hi, Mr. Shafir, I need you to sign right there. Just right on the line, if you don't mind. I just sign. Just right there on the line, if you don't mind. Hey, what, uh, what are you cooking back there? Uh, oh, is it some soup, you fucking bitch? <laughs> you know, makes a break for it, reaches into his pocket for his pocket ham. That honestly, we thought you guys had <laughs> ham on you at all times. We didn't know any goys, we didn't want to know any goys, we just thought you guys were like, just in case some juice soup appears, I'm gonna be ready. <laughs> Fucking dunks it in the ham, fuck off Jews, you know, and then takes off. Me and all my friends, same exact daydream. None of us were like, I'm gonna go fight that guy. Well, why? You'll lose. There's no reason. No, we all the same daydream. We're going for that measuring cup. <laughs> and if it's less than 160th, we're eating ham soup tonight. <laughs> yeah, what, what did you guys dream about when you were 19? Same shit or like different shit? No. <laughs> no. By the way, okay, so you guys, I, I know I'm painting this picture of, of Orthodox Jews being like very insular and like different, but like we're not, we're not that different than you. It's like just like one step down, you know? We did normal shit. We listened to top 40 music. Uh, we could watch movies, rated R movies even. No nudity, but violence was fine as long as it was boys dying. It was cool. <laughs> Um, I played basketball, I was on a basketball team. My league was uh, three Jewish schools, uh, a deaf school, and a Sidwell Friends. <laughs> yeah, but you had to play with your yarmulke on. The girls had to play with skirts with sweatpants underneath. Damn. Yeah, but I played with a yarmulke on. And what I would do is I clip my hair, my clip on. So okay. Yarmulke, just one clip, so it would like move around a little. I'm six foot three, I was the tallest Jew in like nine years of my school. <laughs> so I was a center, so there's no, Jews aren't known for their vertical, so what the fuck am I gonna do? So I get the ball on the post, right? And then I go like this, and the yarmulke would like, <laughs> Move, and it would put like defenders in a trance and they would follow the yarmulke <laughs> drop step to the left the easy <laughs> yeah you gotta use what you got, you uh... what you got. <laughs> yeah we're like you just like one step off you know like okay like christians you're not allowed to have premarital sex but you do it 
Mm -hmm. He was not allowed. And Jews were not allowed to touch women before marriage. Uh, but, we, you know, we still did. It was like bad kids. Touch? We'd meet girls in the woods behind school, and we'd, like, hold hands. <laughs> but God now damn. we're doing it, we're like, what a fucking slut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Who would marry her now? <laughs> <laughs> it's you, but one step off, that's all. Let me talk about Yom Kippur. It's our biggest holiday. It's our most somber day in, in, in the Jewish calendar. It's a day of atonement, part of the Aseri Yom Kippur, the 10 days of repentance um, from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur. And you have to pray for forgiveness the whole day on Yom Kippur. Uh, you have to fast from sundown to the next day sundown. It's super somber. But God's judging you for your sins. He's deciding on your fate. Um, this is one of my earliest memories. This is me as a probably a six, six year old, maybe first grade. Guys, it's going to get weird right here. <laughs> Just so you know. Uh, first grade, my dad, before Yom Kippur started, he was like, hey, come with me to the front lawn. We're going to say his prayer called Kaparot. Uh, and he brought with him to say his prayer a chicken, a live chicken. And I was like, I'm going to name it Big Nate. <laughs> yeah, my dad said, oh, we will not be naming this chicken. <laughs> yeah, and I should have said, Dad, what's this foreshadowing mean? Here's how Kaparo works. Uh, you say this prayer over and over again, and then symbolically, as you say it, your sins are supposed to kind of like wash off you a little bit. But they don't evaporate, the sins. They got to go somewhere. So... The chicken. This chicken... Damn. Yeah, it's a sin chicken. <laughs> and it eats sins. I know, I get it. It's very strange. We're not the only culture that does shit like that. There's other cultures with similar stuff. There's a tribe in the Amazon, uh, Central South America, every three years, villagers come together, they put their sins on a goat, and they fucking kick the goat off a cliff. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Catholics, you tell your sins to a rapist behind a counter. <laughs> and then, you know, he does whatever he wants with it. So let, let's not judge what's weirder or less weird. It's all pretty fucking out there. And Jews, we got a sin chicken. <laughs> So six years old, first grade, we're saying copper row, we're saying this prayer over and over again. All my sins, you know, my gossip, fucking eat it, sin chicken. Uh, I punched my sister, I stole a pencil. Eat it, sin chicken, you love it, slurp it up. My dad's over there doing his copper row, and this chicken's just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fucking covering this bitch in sins, you know? <laughs> it's like a bukkake of regret all over this fucking slurp's face. God, come on, just Bible talk, you guys. That's all we're doing here. Just regular Bible talk. I've done this before. And, uh, and then we were done, and my dad was like, all right, symbolically, we're wiped clean of sin. I was like, oh, so cool. Can we go back inside? He goes, yeah, we can go back inside. But before we do, I mean, this chicken's got to pay for his crimes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Big Nate? What did Big Nate do? He goes, Fuck, no, there's no one here by that name, first of all. I already told you that. <laughs> Second of all, he knows what he did. He punched his sister, he stole that pencil, he gossiped. All my stuff? Look man, Jews are excellent lawyers. And this motherfucker's gonna hang for his crime. <laughs> yeah, so he reached down in front of me. Six years old, I was screaming for him not to. I was like, no, uh, no, please. And he reached down, he grabbed this chicken by the neck. And, uh, calm down. Uh, <laughs> he didn't snap the neck. He picks it up by the neck and just starts like, ah! Oh, it's way worse than whatever you guys pictured five seconds ago. <laughs> far, far, far by bear. Whatever you were thinking is like the way, I did not see it coming at all. Damn. You know who's more surprised? Big Nate. <laughs> you should have heard like, what the fuck? There's no I die? <laughs> you asked that chicken eight minutes earlier, how are you gonna die? No way, it guesses correctly. <laughs> Big Nate, how are you gonna die? Like, old age, I think, probably old age. <laughs> These Jews treat me great, you know? He's never gonna, I'm gonna die by swinging over a Hebrew's head <laughs> in some Northern African voodoo ritual. <laughs> and by the way, it was not only my family. It wasn't like we were the weird ones. If you drive down the streets the afternoon before Yom Kippur, uh, down Teaneck, New Jersey, or Skokie, Illinois, or Kentville, Maryland, or wherever you guys keep your Johnny Cash Jews. <laughs> Yeah, you'll see dozens of them lassoing poultry in front of their horrified young sons. Oh and he finished, yeah. and threw it down right near my feet. Not dead, just hurt bad. <laughs> like, not gonna recover bad. You know, taking a wing, trying to get away. Like, bah! <laughs> bah! 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 
just trying to get home and see your eggs one more time. <laughs> and then you can't eat the chicken afterwards. Now they'll have the chickens. Because it's got, it's got all our sins on it, so you can't eat it. So you know what we do with it? You're, not, I mean, you're for sure not gonna like this, but uh, <laughs> we give it to poor people. We don't tell them about the sins. <laughs> They were like, here, here's some chicken. Eat it, eat it. No, it's chicken. Go ahead, eat it. Eat the chicken. Eat the chicken. Eat the chicken. It's good. Eat it. Eat the chicken. It's good. Eat the chicken. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so here's the weird part. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, this is the weird part. <laughs> yeah, that's not the weird part at all. That's not the weird part. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. That's not the weird part. Here's the weird, I took it for granted. Here's the weird part. I went home again for Rosh Hashanah. It's part of the 10 days of repentance. Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur. It's called the Aseri Yom Chuva. And I went home again, probably seven, eight years ago. And at this point now, I'm way out of the religion, okay? When I was like, I guess 22, 23, I had a crisis of faith. And I realized, well, I realized I didn't believe in God. And that's like a pretty important part of the religion. <laughs> uh, it was, actually, it was when I was in that yeshiva, that seminary in Jerusalem. I, um, Okay, so I left a light on above my bed, a reading light on above my bed in the dormitories, and um, it was just in my eye on Friday night, on Shabbos night, and I couldn't fucking sleep. It was right in my eye. I was getting so fucking frustrated that eventually I was like, fuck this, I'll just, I'll, I'll turn it off. You know, and right when I went to turn it off, I was like, some people walked by my window, and I'm like, fuck, I'll get in trouble. There's no goys to help me, you know? I'm not in Jerusalem. <laughs> so I was like, fuck. And I didn't turn it off, but then I thought about it later. I was like, why would I care if people got me in trouble? You know? I should care about God. And then it hit me, I'm like, oh, I don't believe in God. <laughs> Fuck. So I'm like, I'm out, I'm done. I went and got my first non-kosher meal, Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah. Do not clap for Taco Bell, <laughs> ever. Oh, I was so like overcome by, by like guilt, I threw up after I ate it. But now that I'm looking back on it, I realized it was not the guilt at all. <laughs> I just thought that then. I thought that was real food back then. It's Taco Bell. Never ever eat there. <laughs> so I left. I had to leave. I had to tell my I had to tell my Orthodox Jewish Holocaust survivor father that I was out. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. He wasn't stoked. I get it from his perspective. You gotta understand. Like he sent me to Hebrew school for twelve years at like fifteen thousand dollars a year. You know, Jews don't love wasting money. I don't know if you've heard about us. <laughs> And then yeshiva, seminary in Jerusalem at like 30 grand a year for two more years. And yeah. when I got out, I was like, Dad, I need to talk to you about something important. And he's like, you're going to become a rabbi, don't you? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, quite the opposite. <laughs> I want to tell dick jokes to drunk people all over America. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's like, uh, he was mad. He goes, uh, he goes, I told him I didn't believe in God. He goes, even a dog believes in God. <laughs> You're yeah. lower than a dog. <laughs> which, which did hurt until I looked it up. I'm like, what research are you quoting on that? <laughs> so we're fine now. We're totally fine. Uh, but I went home again for Rosh Hashanah, the other part of the 10 days of repentance. And before it started, uh, he took me to the backyard. He goes, come to the say this prayer called Tashlach. He brought a loaf of bread with him. Back to this creek in the, in the woods. He starts tearing off pieces of bread, saying some prayer, throw it in the creek. And I'm like, what, what is this? Because I'm out. I don't remember any of this, right? And he goes, uh, oh, well, what we're doing here is we're putting our sins on the bread. And then, uh, <laughs> and these fish, these sin fish, uh, they eat our sins. <laughs> they swim away. Yeah, and dude, all these memories started flooding back. And I was like, wait, is this like that chicken thing from when I was little? And he goes, yeah, yeah, good memory. Exactly. They're interchangeable. You can do either one. <laughs> <laughs> you had the option? When I was six years old, you could have fed goldfish with me? <laughs> and instead, you, you killed me, Lee! <laughs> he was like, in hindsight, it was not the best idea. <laughs> yeah, but getting out of the religion, man, I thought I'd, be, I thought I'd miss a sense of community and stuff, but no, nah, I got my first blowjob, and I'm like, oh, hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I experienced new things. Every Saturday morning, I'm fucking flicking on and off lights. I'm like, uh, you know. In college, like, do you have OCD? I'm like, making up for lost time. Uh, 
Yeah, but I'm way out now. But there are still like Jewish like stereotypes that, uh, well, maybe you guys know them. I'm sure you've heard them, you know? Big dicks, great lovers. Uh... <laughs> what have you guys heard? Go ahead, throw it out. Jewish stereotypes, what have you heard? Big nose. Big nose. Cheap. Cheap, sure. That, a lot of people said that one, okay. <laughs> Stinky. Eyesight. Terrible what? Eyesight. Terrible eyesight, not bad. Moronic? Moronic. Oh, neurotic, okay. That I will overlap. <laughs> what? They like to haggle. Yeah, these are all correct. Afraid of cats. That's just one Jew you met. No. <laughs> they control the weather. We do not control the weather. <laughs> we are working on it, but we're not there yet. We are making the plans. Brooklyn, bad at basketball. How about smart, funny, any of the good ones? You, know? Creative. you guys all went negative for no reason at all. These are all true. Everything you've said is true. <laughs> cheap, big noses. That's, that, here's how that affects my life. Because by the way, we are cheap, but that's only compared to you. You gotta understand, I didn't grow up with you. So, you know, maybe I'm cheap compared to you guys, but I'm not cheap compared to Chaim and Shlomo. <laughs> you know? So we were aware of the stereotypes. I told you, we watched movies and stuff, but we just had fun with them. We're very funny people, so we just had fun with it. We had this game in high school we played called uh, Get It Juice. And the way you play was, if you had a few pennies in your pocket, you could start the game. Um, yeah, you guys can all play this if you want. Actually, you would get fired for sure. Do not play. Don't, don't play. I, I'm wrong about that. Uh, but th any three pennies or more. So in between classes, if you were like, you all oh, I got some. As everyone's in the hallways, you just go, get it, juice! <laughs> you just throw it. I'm like, oh, come on! <laughs> Yeah, our rabbis were like, absolutely not. You cannot play that game anymore. Uh, yeah, and now it comes out with the cheap of the big noses. Every time I'm at a party with my comedian friends and cocaine is going around, like as soon as it gets to me, all my friends are like, well, I guess we're all done with the cocaine now. <laughs> the guy with the biggest nostrils who loves free shit the most just stepped up to the plate. Uh, Come on, guys, cut me some slack. <laughs> Here's a modern Jewish stereotype. Jewish women, terrible at blowjobs. <laughs> it's a real thing. <laughs> Prove me wrong. <laughs> pushy, Jews are pushy. That one I hate. That one's the one I see the most. And that's Sephardic and Ashkenazic Jews. We're both fucking pushy, dude. Doesn't excuse all the bad shit that's happened to us, you know? <laughs> the Holocaust, that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty much it. But honestly, not much has gone wrong for Jews. But when it does go wrong, <laughs> it goes like off the fucking rails. Actually, off the rails would have been a really good thing during the Holocaust. <laughs> it would have saved a lot of lives. Oh, man. Ah, <sighs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get it, you. <laughs> Get it, you. <laughs> You just throw some pennies. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I can't yeah. hit a real game. Yeah, <laughs> man. I can see them playing as. <laughs> Jesus, man. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Ari, definitely um, dropping some knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This, this, this is a one of a kind piece. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I've enjoyed it every second of it. Yeah. You know? Very, very strict religion. No. Yeah. He said women can't show their hair. Mm -hmm. They have to wear wigs over their hair because, you know. Or just have it covered. Thou shalt not cover, cover thy neighbor's wife. Right. <laughs> they said the hair, you can cover thy neighbor's hair, so you got to right. cover. What about the eyes? You can cover, what, she got pretty eyes. You got to cover the eyes, too. I mean, the pretty teeth. You got to cover the teeth. Uh, I, guess, I, Damn. Guess, I guess that's if the person next to you know was like, ah, I like your wife's teeth. But how would you know? I mean, maybe they said it. I don't know. That's what I mean. Like, you know what I mean? Like, maybe they'd be like, oh, uh, your wife's hair is nice today. Or whatever they would say it. And, all it's right. very strict. Girl, you got to cover that up. Every time you come around, you got to be in a <laughs> baseball cap. <laughs> oh, whatever. Strict. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if I can do that. Yeah. Yeah, and the swinging <laughs> the chicken over the head and putting the sins in it. 
Oh, the yeah. sin chicken. <laughs> Big Nate. <laughs> Did that shit in the front yard? <laughs> if I saw that shit going on in my neighbor's yard, <laughs> I had to make some calls. Oh, man, yeah. So he said his first uh, non-kosher meal was Taco Bell. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> yeah, that probably wouldn't be a good first one to eat. <laughs> no. Nah. You're going to shock your stomach. You're right. <laughs> And so I was like, what the, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what are you putting in me? Real food. <laughs> yeah, I agree with him, Taco Bell. I mean, you know, uh, in a crunch. <laughs> when you're in a crunch. Yeah, it can be tasty, you know what I mean? But, yeah. Yeah, man. And then, uh, what do you say? About, uh, dang. Oh, the stereotypes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that most of those stereotypes, I think, I, you know, I've heard, you know what I mean? And stereotypes aren't necessarily a bad thing. It's just, I guess, when you have bad, bad, you know, intentions behind it, you know what I mean? But, I mean, yeah, yeah, stereotype is opinion, you know what I mean? There's something usual to... Yeah, all races have stereotypes. Exactly, you know what I'm saying? And some are good, some are bad, you know, you embrace them and, and accept them all, you know what I mean? Just like, uh, you know what I'm saying, just like kind of like, uh, you know, cancel culture, you know what I mean? Like, um, I don't I don't know if R was ever a part of that or not, you know what I mean? But, um, you know, he, he's, he's continuing to drop great specials, you know what I mean? That people can um, learn from and, and laugh at and have a good I think time. A, I think a lot, I, mean? I think people will learn a lot from his special. Uh, definitely. Well, I mean, you know, yeah. you know. And then, you know that that's what I've heard. I heard, I've heard, heard that a it lot. was yeah. <laughs> I'm learning a lot. Yeah, honestly. about about reli- you know about the religion and, and about the Jewish culture. You know what I mean? And um, which I did not know a lot of before. 